Good day, this is Jeff Rouse checking in from Edie's Cafe. How you doing, Norma? Nice to see you. Shake good. my it's hand. Great That's to awesome. see you again. Uh, we're anxious to have breakfast here this morning. Uh, tell us about Edie's. How long has Edie's been here? It's been here since 1972. And started by Edie? Yes, it is. That's awesome. And I know you're known for great breakfast, and we're anxious to have that. Uh, I, we just got done shooting an episode of Martin County on TV. Would you like to see an episode of that? I sure would. Well, let's take a look. Good day, this is Jeff Rouse with another episode of Martin County on TV. And my guest host today is Rich. Rich, welcome aboard. Hi Jeff, thanks for having Rich, me. Rich, uh, of course I know who you are. You've been in town a long time, long time business owner. Mm -hmm. Share with the folks that might not know what you do. Yeah, well, everybody knows me as the Culligan man in town. We've been in, my name's Rich Johnson. I'm a third generation Culligan water dealer here in Martin and Faribault County. Um, We've been uh, in business since 1949, so we've been around a long time. Jeff. 1949, yeah. Yeah. that's impressive. Third generation? Third generation, so my grandfather started it. My dad owned it for many years, and then I bought it from him back in 1997. 97, and yeah. speaking of 97, yeah. I recently watched an episode of Hometown Focus oh, yeah. in 1999. Were you on that show? I, I was, and I saw that, and that's, uh, <laughs> that's interesting to see back from 19 years ago. How I'm much... sure it is. Well, I saw that too, and the fact that you and I have seen it isn't yeah. probably good enough. No. I think we should show the folks. Let's do, do that. Welcome back to Hometown Focus. In this day and age, many businesses come and go. What's the secret to survival? Maybe we can find out today. My guest is the owner of a business celebrating its 50th anniversary this year, Richie Johnson of Culliger, Culligan Water Conditioning. Welcome, Culligan Man. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Rich, for coming Culligan in today. Water, yeah. Culligan yeah, Water, thanks. Culligan Man. So you are third generation, the third generation to have this business. Yes, I am. Tell me a little bit about, about the family history, about... Uh, well, what makes you third generation? All right, well, we're celebrating our 50th anniversary this year. Okay, and um, my grandpa started Culligan Water in 1949 in his garage in uh, Amboy, Minnesota. And then after one year, he moved his business to Fairmont and has been here and had the business until my dad bought him out in 1972. Then from there, I just bought my dad out in two years ago, 1997. Friendly so. buyouts, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Just wanted to make sure everything yeah. is peaceful. The three generations want to make you sure you keep going. very well. That was a little bit of history. We also have some photos and news clips uh, of the history of Culligan. Why don't we go ahead and roll those? Okay, and you we... can tell us about these pictures and what it is that I'll, we see here, all right? I'll do my best. Uh, there's a little photo we're going to do on our uh, 50th anniversary. We're going to have a open house anniversary special at the end of March. Uh, that's my grandpa, Glenn Johnson, in front of uh, the, one of the Culligan plants with his crew. And that's my dad, 1975, with his crew out in front of the Culligan plant. And we just took this this week. It was cold out, uh, out in front of the Culligan plant that is the present plant now. That is uh, my grandpa's first delivery truck, 1948, I believe. Dodge truck, and that was his second one, his service truck in 1949. So You're not still using those. Are they you? look a little different. No, okay. That's a bulk truck they had had some uh, salt delivered in on. Um, I believe that is 1962 delivery truck, which looks quite a bit different than obviously that's our present model diesel automatic. It's a very nice delivery bottle water, salt, and tank truck. That's when uh, my grandpa built the truck or built the business. Uh, right in this present place in 1962. That is the present building. Yeah, we did a little remodeling in last fall and that's what the building looked like when we started the front end and we ended up with a little nicer front tarp on there. Kind of decorated up a little bit. And we get into some old pits, my, grand, or my dad and his brother backwashing back in the early, I don't know, 50, that's my dad there in the early 60s when they put in a commercial water softener somewhere in town here. Uh, who's I don't this know. handsome little I guy? I don't know who that is. <laughs> Me working at the Culligan plant, which I did in high school, and there's my dad and I at, at a fair probably in the early 80s, late 70s. It's one of my many duties. I sit at the fairs and the home shows, so pictures taken out. And there's the Culligan lady. She there's visits us every once in a while. <laughs> okay, She's coming think. to our, home, or our uh, anniversary special, too. Ah. It's my grandpa when uh, he was celebrating his 25th anniversary of the business. And my dad getting an award for 
something in the business, and that's the 30-year award. I, I got it from my dad when he was in the business for 30 years as a dealer. I was at the dealership and got the award for him, so, and he couldn't make it, so that's the back of our truck. Now, you, have, you are a third-generation person to own this business. Was it always your intention of being the, the Culligan man? You know, I get that question a lot. No, it wasn't. Um, I went to college, got my degree from Augustana College, and never even thought about coming back to Fairmont. You know, a lot of people move away and, or start in Fairmont and never want to move back, you know, but uh, my dad called me one day and said, are you interested in moving back in and getting into the business? And I said, yeah, I'd think about it. And I thought about it and I did it and I've been back here and I've never regretted it. I love being in Fairmont. Um, working with my dad was a great pleasure to work with your dad and is it true what they say, though, as generations come down, third generation, did you end up having to do twice the work to keep Dad happy? No, not at all. I think... Uh, You're supposed to say yes. <laughs> no, I, I think is my grandpa and my dad did such a great job of building this business and making it run like it does that it's been easy for me because they've they, they instilled uh, service and quality and it's gone through the community, did a lot with the community, and that's helped with me and my business in running it because they've done such a well job starting starting it out for me. Now, when we talk about Culligan Water, some of the things, tell me about some of the things that Culligan Water does. Well, we deliver salt. We have salt, which everybody knows. Uh, drinking water systems, which is very popular. Water softeners, obviously, is what Culligan started out in, is water softeners. Um, portable exchange tanks. Bottled water is getting to be the biggest thing. You see our truck going around. You probably see Culligan bottled water and a lot of the stores and homes around town. Was your grandfather selling bottled water? Ah, uh, you probably did, never even heard of it back <laughs> then, you know that? Even the big jugs? In never the had houses, that. Really? It, that probably just started in the late 80s. Okay. So uh, that has really grown for us in the last few years. How is the water? Uh, I mean, around here we, we have some problems with our water at sure. times. Uh, is this a boon to your business? It, it has helped. We've just put on a little addition due to the bottled water business has grown that much in the last couple of years that we have added a 2,500 square foot addition, just wow. got it done this fall, and that is just to house our um, bottled water. So that has helped us in the growing in the bottled water aspect. Well, when we talk about bottled water, how much water do you, does your company go through or, or send out to the consumer in a year? Well, we get, uh, in a year, I don't know, we get 22 racks, one semi load in every, about every two weeks, which is 22 racks, 40 jugs in a rack, wow. so it's quite a few. We go through a lot of water. And that's a big portion of our business. Any thoughts why this has lasted for 50 years and continues on? Well, I think it has to do with, uh, well, first of all, like I said, my grandpa and my dad established a well business. Um, my service department we have and our route guys, they do a great job. And that's, in any business, you have to have good service. And we, we uh, stress ourselves on taking care of our customers. And we have over 50 years, and that's why we've maintained them, and we hope to get many more. We're about done here. I'm going to give you a chance. You have some very exciting things coming up here very shortly. Why don't you tell everybody who's watching out there what it is and uh, what it okay. is to look forward to? Well, in uh, the end of March, I think the last weekend of March, we're going to have our 50th anniversary open house. Keep your eyes and ears open for that. It'll be in the paper and on the radio, and you'll see it around that we're going to have an, a, an open house anniversary special salt sale, throw it all together in one uh, at the end of March. So that's kind of, we're looking forward to that. 50 years, we're proud of it, and... Uh, Looking forward to being here another 50 years. Going to have any uh, new generation take over the business? That uh, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck to you. Down Thank you road. for coming in today. Really Thanks, Michael. appreciate it. Wow, that was great. That was interesting to see that after all these years, isn't it? <laughs> Rich, wow. you did a great job. I think you're a natural on TV. Oh, thank you. You made it easy. <laughs> they <laughs> made Michael it easy. Did. Yeah, back That's then. Michael, way yeah. back then, absolutely. Uh, I love seeing the old vehicles and different things, too, that they use over the years yeah. and stuff. Yeah, so, isn't that neat? The old vehicles for, uh, for uh, delivery and yeah. service and all the old. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, that was done in 99. That interview was done in 99, yeah. which already has been just short of 20 years. Right. Yep. Can you share with the folks a little bit of what's happened with your business in the last 20 years? Yeah, well, we're 20 years older, so we're going to be celebrating 70 years now uh, next year in, in uh, 2019. So we're looking forward to that. And, and again, going to have a celebration of some sort coming up here in the next year, uh, which will be fun to do and uh, see what show off some of our, uh, our, our different things we do for Culligan and how we take care of our customers. And I'm looking forward to that. You Absolutely. know, 70 years is a big deal, third generation, 
and uh, working on our fourth. There hopefully. you go, yeah. perfect. So share with me a couple of the specifics of what has changed the most with Culligan in the last 20 years. Yeah, you know, as you see in a lot of uh, markets and different products, it's all about efficiencies and yeah, Culligan Corporate's just made better equipment, more efficient, use less salt, use less water. So uh, go back it, just a sentence. Or yeah, two. Um, the biggest thing that's changing is the water we're drinking right now is everybody's real, uh, really wondering what's in their water and that's a big thing with our reverse osmosis and bottled water which we talked about 20 years ago. Sure. But uh, it's very gotten very important on uh, arsenic and lead and all the different things that are in the water that can be removed by our equipment. So uh, drinking water is probably our biggest changes over the last 20 years along with the efficiency of our equipment. And how many employees do you have? We have uh, six of us, including six. myself. Okay. Yep. And we have two counties that we take care of right now, Martin and Faribault County. Oh, you take care of Faribault too, I yes, didn't realize is, that. Yeah. Very cool, yeah. very cool. Is equipment changed in how you deliver, how you prepare everything to be delivered? Is that uh, a little bit, you know, we got nicer trucks. As you've seen the old stuff, it's uh, trucks to deliver. And uh, you know, the biggest thing is for us is our employees, family owned and our employees have been with me a long time. And if without our employees, none of this would work as good sure, as it does. Absolutely. And uh, they make uh, bad guys that are with me a long time and gals that have been a long time that keep things running smooth. Uh, of, of any of those employees, are they set or are they have they Worked for your father and such? No, not anymore. Uh, a lot of them did, but uh, have retired. Oh, since of course. Then. Yeah, of course. Well, it's been a while. Yeah, yeah. That's, right. That's right. I believe you already said, Rich, but what year did you officially uh, start working for your dad, and what year did you become in charge of yeah. the business? I moved back here in 1991, the fall of 1991, and officially purchased the business for my dad in January of 1997. Awesome. January I think 1st, you so. said that in your interview yeah, too, I think so didn't too, you? Yeah, so too, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's all in there. Uh, so now uh, we talked a little bit about the customers and different things. Have your customers changed? Obviously we talked already about the uh, water and different things. Have your uh, have the customers aged? Or are they all different ages now? Yeah, they're all different ages. You know, we've got some long-term customers that have been with us a long time. Sure. Um, we've got new ones. We've got a lot of new technology like we were talked about earlier. We've got the outdoor vending now, which is a big service to people like to drive right up and get their stuff. And now, my right wife up. and I partake in, partake in that. Tell, us, tell me a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, that was an uh, idea of ours a couple years ago that we need to get something for the vended water people that always like to buy in the grocery stores sure. and make it more convenient. And People and we talk to people and they like that when you can pull right up, get your water and go, and not have to drag them to the grocery store. So. Oh yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. We do it all the yeah. time, it's a, and it's at a great price too. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So, yeah, it's made right there, at Culligan. And you mentioned uh, about next generation. Tell us a little bit about your family. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm been you married. were single when. when yeah, you I did was that. single. I was going to get married in the last one, <laughs> and my wife Stephanie and I have been married 21 years now, and. Uh, we have two boys, Jaden, who is 17 years old, and Jackson, who is 14 years old. Do they work in the business a little? Uh, a little bit in the summers and when sure. I can, but uh, they're busy at school of and course. stuff like that. But it's uh, never know when the next one's going to take over and make it a fourth generation. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, did you play sports when you were in? Uh, Absolutely, I did when I was in. Yep. What did you What you play? I played basketball and I ran cross country. I know it's hard to believe, but uh, <laughs> and I played on the golf team. Now here's my segue. Tom Mahoney. Yes. Your coach? Uh, for football for a little bit mm -hmm. when I was younger. And then, yeah, great guy. Was always around the school when I was and, there. And with the school a long time, I understand. Yeah. That's yeah. very cool. Yeah. Uh, well, the reason why I say that is we have an interview that I think we're going to show the folks from 2003 that Lenny did. Oh, wow. Lenny Tweeten did with 2003 that I think they're really enjoying, and you should too. Cool. Let's, Let's take a look. It. In this week's Community Report, Len Tweeten will take a look at, uh, back at a local icon in the history of Fairmont sports as he visits with one of Fairmont High School's most successful coaches, Tom Mahoney. It's this week's History Lesson. This is Lenny Tweeten. Today we're at Mahoney Field. We're going to take a step back in time and uh, visit with Tom Mahoney and talk to him a little bit about his career in coaching here at Fairmont. He had a very long and successful career, so I think this will be really interesting. Tom, to begin with, um, can you tell us just a little bit about how you got started in coaching, uh, if you coach anywhere other than Fairmont, and uh, how long you were here? Well, Lenny, I guess to get started uh, with a 
junior high coach that probably was uh, somebody that inspired me a little bit along the line. I think I remember in ninth grade civics class writing a, a vocational paper on uh, wanting to be a coach, a high school coach. And so uh, after I graduated from the University of Minnesota, I started coaching uh, at Lake City, Minnesota in 1951. I coached there for five years and came to Fairmont in 56 and retired in 90. So uh, I had 39 years of active coaching, uh, one and a half years as a trainer at the University of Minnesota and have enjoyed every day of it. Okay, well that's, that's definitely a long and uh, successful career. Um, over the course of your time in coaching, and I guess especially here at Fairmont, uh, are there any games or any seasons or anything that kind of stand out in your memory as far as uh, uh, you can recall? Well, I guess if you, if you think of the, the memory, I think the first game that I won uh, as a coach uh, back in Lake City in 1951 when we beat a Stuartville team was probably as exciting because uh, I, at least we could win a football game and I knew I wasn't going to lose them all. And I guess I always looked at the start of every season that way too. If you can win that first one, you're not going to lose them all that year. But uh, there were an awful lot of football games during that period of time. Uh, I would suppose maybe our run in 67, 8, and 9 when we were undefeated all three years uh, would have to be a highlight. Um, uh, a game that sticks in my mind was right here on this field when we lost a playoff game to Hutchinson in 82, um, which uh, was really a, a heartbreaker for, for everybody. But um, there's just an awful lot of games and lots of, lots of good kids to think and have memories of. Sure. Over the course of your career, I'm sure you've seen a lot of changes. Um, what are some that uh, stick out in your mind, or what are some of the things that has changed as far as coaching from the time you started until the time you retired? Well, I think uh, the fact that you can have more time with the kids now, uh, going to clinics, uh, going to camps for the kids uh, is all a benefit. Uh, the biggest change probably is the speed and uh, the, the value of assistant coaches. Um, when I was in high school, I remember we had one assistant coach and the head coach. Mm -hmm. uh, now you look at some of these staffs, and particularly the 5A schools up in the cities, uh, they have 12, 15 coaches on the sidelines. And uh, we've been very fortunate here. Our administration has been able to give us a good football program in Fairmont so that we've had uh, junior high coaches, ninth grade B squad and varsity coaches. And uh, um, as far as um, the experience and everything, I think the exposure to television, uh, makes the kids more alert and uh, aware of what you can do and what you can't do uh, yeah. on a football field. And uh, so the, the game has improved and of course speed is a big thing now. Uh, if you don't have speed, I don't think you're a very good football player. <laughs> sure. Well, you've received a lot of awards over the course of your career. Are there any that stand out or some that you could mention that uh, uh, stand out in your career? Well, I, I've certainly been blessed, and I think that maybe the one thing that uh, probably is a real cherishing memory is the fact that the field here is named after me. Uh, that's something that I appreciate sure. very much and uh, consider it a real honor and a uh, recognition. Uh, I think the awards that I got, uh, many of those awards I think I would share with the assistant coaches I've had through the years because we really had some dedicated guys. And uh, the only way that you can be any good is to have a good staff of people. Mm -hmm that can relate to the kids and uh, do a good job and of course we've had good community support um, the custodial people the music people with the band uh, it's just been a great place to, to coach here because we've always had a good atmosphere and uh, I think they're working hard to get it back to that and I think they will as you think back over your career what what's the biggest surprise that you can remember over your time in coaching is there any one thing that stands out something you weren't expecting <laughs> Oh, I don't know if I could think of any one particular thing that would be a big surprise. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I really can't. Uh. Okay. Um, are you still involved in uh, athletics in any way now, even though you're retired from coaching and fair amount everything? Yes, uh, I retired as the football coach and the athletic director, and uh, I now work part-time for the State <laughs> High School League. I'm what they call a region secretary. I set up uh, tournaments for the 40 Class A schools that are in the south central area of Minnesota from Jordan over to um, Cedar Mountain down to Sherburn over to Glenville Emmons and uh, including Fairmont now. Fairmont's just come back into our jurisdiction as a Class A school. So uh, that keeps me busy. It's kind of like being an athletic director. Uh, you're involved with the, the coaches and the people I've always enjoyed being with and uh, so I do have that job and then I, I'm on the go for chain gang crew mm -hmm. so uh, I work up at the Gopher home games and that's kind of fun uh, still on the sideline and uh, 
you got to be a little careful, though. I got run over the first ball game. Uh, <laughs> so I got to make sure I get out of the way from now on because they're bigger, faster, and stronger. Sure. But uh, it's pretty much my activity as far as uh, the high school and coaching. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, Tom. Appreciate the opportunity to talk to you, and uh, I wish you the best of luck in the future. Well, thank you very much, Lenny. Appreciate it. Okay. This is Lenny Tweeden for Hometown Focus. Well, that was a great report, wasn't it? That was neat to see. Absolutely. Definitely part of Fairmont's history. Oh, big time. Yeah. And Lenny always does a good job, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, he does good. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. So now tell the folks, if they wanted to learn more about Culligan or about your business, website yeah, and such? Yeah, we're all over, as you see. Is uh, website is always good. we got a great new website. We're on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Um, you can call us at any time, obviously. We're open Monday through Friday and five days a week, ready to go. And you can go get water 24, even hours, up, a 24 hours a day, yep. seven days a week. That's Outside really vended cool. water all the That's time. Really so. cool. uh, well, I want to thank you for coming on, but before we go, fair just got over. Yeah. You go to the fair, I assume? Every year, we're always there. I've Mystery seen faucets there, we're there, yeah. <laughs> I've seen your booth many, many yep. years. Yep. Have you been, at, has your family been at the fair with the booth? All these years? We have. We're kind of a staple there. We have our same spot we've been. I'd have to ask my dad on the years exactly, but uh, same spot for 50, 50 years at least. Wow, um, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's been, we never miss it. It's a great way to see and talk to our customers and, uh, and, and, and enjoy the fair aspect of it all. How can you go wrong? You can't. can't go wrong there. Do you ever find anything good to eat when you're at the fair? Always. <laughs> Always do. <laughs> Me too. Yep. Me too. Uh, well, in closing, we're going to show one more segment. This is a segment that uh, Mike Foster, you remember Mike, oh, yeah. great guy, Mike. Yep. Uh, did for us, did for our story, promoting the fair in 2007. Okay. And doing it in a only Mike's yeah. style. I mean, yeah, he has he, such a great style yeah. and he's such a great guy. Always makes it fun, doesn't he? And he's talking to um, uh, Murphy. Um, Eddie. Eddie Murphy who, uh, of course, they did a great tribute to uh, uh, this year. Uh, just a tremendous individual, and I think people will find this rather amusing. So check great. it out. And now we're going to, wait a minute. Bruce has given me a message that there's some almost breaking news. Let's go directly to Mike already in the field. Hi, this is Mike Alert with your almost breaking news story, and I'm here today at the Martin County Fair. Lots of things happening out here. We're going to have a great time, and right now on this beautiful day, we're going to run in and talk to Eddie Murphy from the Martin County Fair Board in the Martin County Arena. So come along. Okay, here we are at the Martin County Arena, obviously the busiest spot at the entire fair, and nothing's going on. Well, it's the wrong date. The 17th on Wednesday, the Martin County cook-off will be at the pork cook-off will be in here. And then in the park at an evening will be the white sidewall. So we're going to have the cook-off here. Right. But not tonight. Not tonight. Oh. It's the 17th of August, Wednesday evening, Wednesday afternoon. And then in the evening in the park, which is the 17th, will be the white sidewall white sidewalls in the park, and then when we're going to have stuff out on the midway too, right? Well, the Gold Star Amusements will be out on the midway, and then of course, then on, you go a little further and go on, on, uh, on Friday, and there's the, uh, i got to look on my sheet for sure, Friday is the 4-H auction, and then they have, we, have a, we have two new sheep shows down there, we have the Minnesota Dorset Show, we have the Minnesota Hampshire Show this year for the very first time, so we're hoping everything goes well. And then, of course, we have, the, we have the car races and so on and so forth down there. And then on Saturday night, we have our big, we have our big headliner, which is Joe Diffie. So we hope we draw a lot of people. Uh, we hope. Well, that sounds great. But, boy, I'm, I'm sorry that this place is empty right now. I blew that. But let's go down to the Midway then and take a look at all the rides that are down there. You'll enjoy that more than me. Okay, Eddie, thanks for bringing us out here, and here we are at the number one hot spot every year at the fair, the Martin County Fair Midway. What's going on? There's nothing out at the Midway. There should be something here at least. There should be rides and balloon breaking things and then ducks. Let's go down to the Banchill area and take a look at what's going on in the concerts. This is where all of it is, and I can't wait to introduce all the acts. Okay. 
I've got this date wrong too, but there's going to be a lot of great musical acts here that you're going to want to see. And it's, remember, the Martin County Fair is going to be August 13th through the 18th here, not where I'm at right now. This is Mike Alert with breaking news stories, and now back to you, Jeff. Hey, where is everybody? There's nothing going on. I got to get back to the studio. Beam me up, Scotty. Well, there you have it, Rich. That Mike, he could always, always do a good job when it comes to performance. Funny guy. Isn't he it? was. Yeah. He was a great guy. He's great at what he did. Absolutely great. Uh, Rich, tell the folks now. Uh, one, one last thought I was just thinking about was, if you want to have your water tested or wonder if you should go with Culligan, what do you offer in that realm? Yeah, where do you start? A lot of yeah. people go, oh, where do I start? I need a system. I need things going at my house. I need better water. You give us a call. We come on out. We test your water. That's the most important part, and we figure out what works for you or what you need. And tests can be just hardness and iron, or it can be a lab test where we have to send it in and we find out if you have arsenic, lead, um, nitrates. Is what, you know, a lot of people looking to see what's in their water, and we get the results back, and then we figure out what system works best for you as far as drinking water. And if it's just a hardness and iron test. We know what iron filter, sulfur, uh, how hard the water is, and you size up what unit you need. Whether you're in town or out in the country, we can take care of it. Well, that's awesome. And I'm sure that technology continues to change and has changed a lot over the last 20, 40 years. Yeah, and efficiency is the big thing now. It's sure, absolutely. Making everything more efficient, so using less salt and water. Well, this has been great, learning, learning more about your business, a business that's been in town more than almost 70 years. 70 years. Very yeah. impressive. Great. Rich, thank you Thanks, for Jeff. guest hosting today. Uh, and uh, we will look forward to seeing you around town. All right, thank you. Wasn't that great, Norma? Those were great reports. Weren't they? They, they were, were awesome. And I want to thank you uh, for joining us today, and I'm anxious to have breakfast here at Edie's. You guys always have the best breakfast. Yes, we do. Absolutely. And we want to thank you for watching, and as we close the show and we show our sponsors, remember, it's not just the past, but the present that tells our story.